looks awesome. Well, hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I am making over the Matchbox Major Pack. This is a first for me. It's a Major Pack number M2B and it's named the Bedford Articulated Freight Truck. These were first produced in 1961, which is one year before I was born. And unlike me, it lasted until 1966. This one is towing the York Freightmaster trailer. It has rear opening doors. This one's been painted black by the previous owner. There's a play wear and tear on the original. I guess that's the original orange paint. I'm not too sure. He even painted the mudguards black. To begin with, I'm going to remove these two rivets and pull the trailer and the base apart. You can see the trailer has a tab at the back and a rivet at the front. So I'm going to drill out this rivet. First up, I'm using a very small drill. I think it's 2.4 millimeters, maybe 2.2. And I'm just drilling out the center of the post. Now I'm drilling out the head of the rivet using a slightly larger drill. After I've done that, I can just remove the base like this. And the base holds these rear doors in, so they come out also. You can see the little hinge pins top and bottom. And just there you can see very small hole where the hinge pins goes. It's very fine little casting detail that. Now I went for about one tenth of a second too long with the drill and I punched right through the base plate. So the screws that I normally use, the M2 screws, are too small. So I'm not going to be able to put the base back on with those. So thinking about it, I thought maybe I can use a pop rivet or a blind rivet as they're known. So I went out to my shed and I found a couple. This one's not too bad. It's quite fat though. I think the head would look all right, but they, uh, the size of the shank there, I think would be pushing it a little bit. If I drilled a hole in that pillar and then used the pop rivet gun on it, it would probably break open or split. So luckily I've got a couple of little ones here I found. I actually had three. I found three of these tiny little ones. I don't know where I got them from or how long I've had them. But I think they're perfect, and they are 2.2 millimeters in diameter. So I'm using a 2.2 millimeter diameter drill to drill out the hole to accept the rivet. For those of you who aren't familiar with these pop rivet guns, they have different sized mandrels for different sized rivets. So on this one, I should be replacing the one that's fitted with the one on the handle there, the smaller size. Now I want this uh, drill to be very accurate. I can't do it by hand. So I'm using my drill press in the shed to do it accurately. So first up, I did the larger drill just to set the scene, I guess, for the smaller drill to go in. So hopefully it will centralize the smaller drill a little bit easier. And I didn't go too deep, just enough to accept the rivet. Let's have a look at it. It actually turned out quite good. And let's do a test fit of the rivet. Oh, wow, that is perfect. Look at that. That's going to look great. Let's just have a look to see what it looks like with the trailer base fitted. It's perfectly central and that rivet fits there. Look at that. I'm happy with that. Now I've got to remove these wheels and axles so I can spray paint this base. But if you can see they are seized on there. Like every single one of them is locked onto the axle. I have no idea why, it doesn't look that particularly rusty. But I need to free them up so I can give myself a little bit of excess axle on the end. 
so I can take the burr off and remove the tyres without damaging the tyres. So I'm using some of this WD-40. So I apply it quite liberally in one of these fast food containers so I don't stain the bench. After a little while I try working the wheels loose with my thumb and fingers, locking one set and trying to roll the other set. And finally they come loose and the axle moves and you can see now I've got a burr that I can work on to get these wheels off. Now I'm going to drill out this small rivet holding the base of the cabin on, that's quite an easy little job. Just comes off like that. Now there's no depth to this rivet, so I'm going to have to probably glue that base back on. But I've got to take this little rivet out here to remove the transparency so I can give it a good clean. I use my modified drill here. It's a special one I use for the canopies or the transparencies. It's very shallow cut. As you can see, I've modified a normal drill. And uh, this way I minimize the risk of drilling through the roof. So I just take the edge of the rivet off and with a little bit of finger pressure, sometimes more persuasion is required, the transparency or windscreen assembly comes out. Look. Just like that, beautiful. Now just check this out. This Obviously I couldn't clean this when it was in the cabin, that's why I've had to remove it. It's in quite a state this one, uh, one of the worst I've seen. So that will take a bit of TLC. Back onto the trailer. Now that I've uh, loosened these wheels I can remove them. Quite simply like that, one at a time, beautiful. I'm going to give these a clean and uh, a bit of a tire wash, make them look like new. Now not only are the wheels on the trailer seized, but I've noticed that the wheels on the prime mover or the Bedford truck front end there are seized also. So Again, I hit them with the WD-40 and try giving them a bit of persuasion to loosen up. They are very, very tight for some reason. I don't quite understand what's happened with these wheels, why they're so tight. Uh, I end up getting cramp in my hand, trying to loosen them up. These ones too. Every single wheel and axle on this particular model were bonded together by some unseen force. There you go, I'm trying to get that cramp out of my hands. Finally I get that burr visible again so I can attack it and take these wheels off. And here we go. Using my Dremel I've bought myself a new sanding uh, drum or whatever it's called. It does a beautiful job, look at that. Now I just use some uh, pliers and a bit of uh, persuasion. And those wheels just slip off the end. Lovely. Now I remove the wheels from the underside of the cabin. And after doing that, I'm now showing you all of the parts ready for paint stripping and cleaning. In this video, I am going to revisit the use of caustic soda to remove the paint. I tried it once before and I had no luck. And apparently I have been informed this method only works if you use hot water with the caustic soda. So today I'm giving it a second shot and I'm going to be using hot water and caustic soda in a glass bowl and let's see if I have better results this time round. So I'm using half a cup here of caustic soda and probably, I don't know, half a pint of hot water. And I give it a stir with a wooden stick. Now I've already put the metal model parts in there. And look at this, literally moments later after the reaction, 
this uh, back end here of the truck it's just stripped down to the bare metal with some remnants of the stickers on there that's all it's hanging on and I'm really quite impressed with that Uh, the only problem is that it's an exothermic reaction and my wife's favourite fruit bowl could not handle the heat and it shattered so <laughs> word of caution maybe use a Pyrex dish to do this and uh, you know you might have some better results but check that out these are the other parts that I've uh, pulled out of the busted bowl after the caustic soda solution spilt everywhere. Most of the paint came off pretty good. I was this is my first time of revisiting this using the hot water and the results are 95% better than they were before because they were pretty much zero before. But I'm still gonna have to resort to my backup plan of using some of this paint stripper because the caustic soda didn't get all of the paint off and I don't have a glass bowl left now to repeat the process as it shattered but I shall certainly be trying this out again and hopefully fine-tuning my method so after I've got rid of all the paint I'm using this small brass brush in my Dremel to further clean the parts of the model and prepare them for repainting you gotta wear eye goggles with these because the the filaments or the individual strands of brass brush fly out from time to time and you would not want to get one of those hit you in the eye. I've had them hit me in the face a few times. If you're working on a carpeted floor, you have to make sure you vacuum afterwards to pick up all the loose bits because they end up stuck in your feet. Believe me, I'm talking from experience here. Now to finish this preparation for painting, I'm using some of these bronze wall pads for the first time that uh, Jack and Elvia sent me very kindly. You may have seen it in an unboxing video recently. And I'll tell you what, it does a mighty fine job. Just look at the sheen on these metal parts here. It is, uh, it's at least twice as good as when I used the normal steel wool that I usually use. So I think it's a product that's well worth having. So thank you once again, Jack and Olivia. Now I'm going to undercoat all of these metallic parts using this Tamiya Grey Fine Primer. Why am I using grey, I hear you say? Because I've ran out of white, that's why. Nonetheless, it goes on extremely finely and does not obscure any of the fine details on these beautiful models. Now here's the transparency as it looked when I first removed it. As you can see, it is filthy. After I've cleaned and polished it, this is what it looks like. And this is now ready to be refitted into the model. As for the wheels, they were pretty grotty. So I'm giving them a quick clean in a bath of warm water with some washing up liquid. They already look heaps better, but I'm going to spruce them up even further by giving them a quick paint over with my tire wash, which is heavily diluted Tamiya black gloss paint. And it actually makes these plastic wheels look like they've just come straight out of the molding machine at the Matchbox Lesney factory. Here's a close-up of the detail on the front of this Bedford truck. On this side there's a fuel tank. And on this side there's a small toolbox with a tiny little padlock on it. And the rear doors have these riveted hinges which are fantastically small. Here's the base plate under the cabin. 
And here's another quick look at the rear axle on the trailer. Now I got some pictures off of the internet as reference. These vehicles came out in an orange and also in a red version. So today I'm trying to replicate the orange version. So I'm mixing up some of these Mr. Hobby paints, the, the red and the yellow there, the lemon yellow. I'm adding the darker paint to the lighter one, but it's not actually working out too well for me. And I seem to be using a hell of a lot of paint. But I have to keep going because I'm committed now. My first batch there seemed a little bit too light. So I'm now going to try and darken it by adding a little bit more red. I know that I'm close to the colour I want, so I'm only adding a small amount of red to make the difference. There we go, that's more like the colour I was after. I will put it in a separate container when I've finished, if there's any left. So I go full steam ahead and start off on the doors. I do the interior of the door first, that way if it splatters or splutters or doesn't spray right, then I've uh, ruined the smallest component and it means that I can recover with ease. But as it is, the paint goes on really well and I'm quite happy. So I just keep going and going. I spray the base of the trailer and also the chassis and cabin of the truck. And the body of the trailer here, I'm just spraying it with the Tamiya Chrome Silver. Goes on beautifully, this paint. Look at that. Lovely. Just like it came out of the factory. And I leave it in the spray booth here to dry, under cover. And here I've sourced a second bowl. I'm uh, covering up the vehicles there to stop dust getting on them whilst they dry. As for the base of the cabin, well, I've already cleaned my airbrush twice today and I didn't fancy doing it a third time. So I've made this rig just to hold it into position whilst I spray it with a aerosol can of paint from my local hardware shop. This is satin black. Whilst that's drying, I'm going to take these rusty looking drab axles and shine them up with some emery paper. And they came up like new. And here's all the parts now ready for reassembly. So now I'm back out in my shed and I'm starting to put the wheels back on the model. Put the wheels on the axles and crush the end of the axles over using my uh, ARS method and it works 90% of the time that's a good one looks good and retains the wheel at the same time now I'm doing the truck take note that these axles are different lengths some are long and some are short and that's because some of them have got uh, four wheels on them like this one and for example the one on the front of this truck's only got two wheels that's why it's probably shorter than this one but something to bear in mind that you don't get the axles mixed up well they look good and they're on there pretty solid too there's a close-up see the finished result looks almost like a factory finished job which is always good now it's time to refit the rear trailer body onto the base using this uh, pop rivet or some people call them blind rivets let me know if you uh, call them something else now before I attach the base I have to fit these doors into the back of the rear container there because this base holds the doors into position. So the doors have to go in first before you refit the base. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, they're amazingly good fit, aren't they? So once everything's back together there, I can just place this pot rivet into the hole that I pre-drilled before and squeeze on the handle. Now support the model because it's going to fly off, you don't want it damaged. There we go. The tail of the rivet is broken off and is retained in the tool. And all you can see now is the head that's left. And it looks pretty good, I think you'll agree. Now for the cabin, to make it match the trailer, I'm just making a fake rivet here. Not too bad, but I'm going to clean this head up a little bit and glue it into place when I refit the base on the cabin. Now it's time to refit the transparency into the cabin. So I'm using a little bit of this clear silicon on a matchstick. I just dab it on the top there, not too much. I position the transparency into the cabin using the tweezers and just uh, make sure I press it down firmly with the cotton bud there just to make sure it sticks. Now I'm putting the base of the cabin on. It clicks in quite well because what was left of the original rivet was quite big. Now that will stay there on its own but just for a finishing touch I'm going to glue this head of the rivet there that I made over the hole and it should end up looking very professional. Final touches now, painting the grille and headlights and the front bumper bar with some chrome ink from a chrome ink pen. You may notice that I'm holding the model with a magnet attached to the axles. By doing this there is less chance of damaging the new paintwork whilst you are painting the details. For that finishing touch I've made some reproduction decals for this model. Here's a reminder of what we started with. The decals have been painted over in black by a previous owner. The wheels were filthy and dull and the windscreen was scuffed and dirty. There was scarcely any chrome on the details of this model and it was showing its age. And this is what it looks like now. This Bedford freight truck with its new coats of orange and silver paint, its 10 spruced up wheels on corrosion free axles, a polished windscreen, chrome detailing and a new set of decals has now become the pride of the fleet at Davies Tire Company. Here we can see Dave, Greg and their supervisor Jeff whom they have nicknamed the King. They are loading this truck up with tires for some interstate customers. They work hard but also have a bit of fun from time to time to make the day go quicker. Now Jeff is checking the load for security and locking the doors. This truck has now got ahead of it a 30 hour drive to Queensland to deliver some Davies quality tyres to some very important customers. I do hope that the driver has remembered to pack his sandwiches and flask of coffee. We all wish you a safe trip and hope to see you back here soon. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Thanks for watching and until next time Goodbye. Look what you made me do. I knew, oh baby, baby, I'm dancing with a stranger. Baby made me do. Oh baby, baby, I'm dancing with a stranger. Why is it so hard? Seriously, that seized on there. Ah! Oh. What the? Can't get the bloody lid back on. No. Well, you know the one I keep all the time.
all the lemons in? Mm, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Well, I don't know where it's gone, but it's missing. Mm, uh, sorry, don't know.